Hold on a minute. Imagine if you're in this scenario. You own a lending company and you need to choose between two credit score models. Which one do you choose? Model 1 or Model 2? Well, even if there's only one model, how do you know if it's working? How do you assess if your model is good or bad? Knowing how your model is performing is important because if it's bad and if you don't know it, you'll keep losing money. If you keep losing money, you'll eventually go bankrupt and lose your company. If you lose your company, your wife will leave you for some rich data scientist. If your wife leaves you, you'll turn miserable and eventually become a creepy, drunk old man who lives in bars and hits on girls half his age. How sad. But don't worry, we're here to stop you from becoming one. In this video, we will explain two of the most used credit scoring evaluation methods, the Gini coefficient and the KS statistic. Let's start with the Gini first. The Gini coefficient, also commonly referred to as the accuracy ratio or the power ratio, is used to measure how well a model is able to distinguish between good and bad customers. It does so by using this formula. If that looks confusing, don't worry, we'll explain it by example. Let's first take a look at the good outcome column. In the first row, there's value of 5,000 for a score of low. This means that among the customers who had a good outcome, there are 5,000 who had a low credit score. Then we divide 5,000 by the total number of customers, which is 250,000, and 5,000 divided by 250,000 is 0 0.02 or 2%. We then place this 2% in the cumulative good column. In the next row, there's 45,000 customers with average credit scores. Then we add this 45,000 with the 5,000 customers before to obtain 50,000 and we divide this 50,000 again with the total number of customers, 250,000 and we obtain a cumulative good score of 20%. In the third row, we add 200,000 with 45,000 and 5,000 and we obtain 250,000 which when divided by 250,000 of course gives us a cumulative good score of 100%. So we see that the cumulative good column represents the cumulative percentage of customers with good outcomes. The CPN in the Gini coefficient formula refers to this cumulative percentage of customers with good outcomes, with I representing the number of rows. CPP, on the other hand, represents the cumulative percentage of customers with bad outcomes, shown in the cumulative bad column. We obtain the cumulative bad values using the similar method that we use for the cumulative good, but in this case, since the number of bad customers is the same for all three credit scores, the cumulative bad scores are 33.3%, 66.6%, and 100%. Then we calculate the cumulative bad score of each row minus the cumulative bad score of the previous row. So for example, here in the first row, we get a value of 33.3% because it's the first row. And in the second row, we get 66.6 minus 33.3, which is 33.3%. And in the third row, we have 100 minus 66.6%, which is roughly 33.3% as well. We also calculate the cumulative good value of each row plus the cumulative good value of the previous row. So in the first row, we have 2%. And in the second row, we have 20 plus 2, which is 22%. And in the third row, we have 100 plus 20, which is 120%. Then we multiply these two columns together to find the Z value. And we will then sum up all the Z values, which in this case results in 48%. Finally, the Gini coefficient is obtained by using this formula, 100% minus the sum of Z values. So we have 100% minus 48% and we obtain a Gini coefficient value of 52% or 0.52. A Gini value of 100% means that the model perfectly separates the good and bad customers, while a value of 0% means the model considers good and bad customers as the same. So what's a good Gini coefficient value? Well, in general, higher value models are better, but actually there is no hard rule as to what constitutes a good value. For example, in most customer behavioral scoring, any value below 60% is considered bad, whereas in retail application scoring, a value above 50% is actually considered good. Now, if we go back to our previous scenario, we can compare between different models and pick the model with the best Gini coefficient value. In this case, since model 2 has a better value, then we will go with that one. Now let's move on to the other method, which is the Kolmogorov-Smirnov statistic. 
but if you're not Russian, you can just call it KS statistic. It's a lot easier. Similar to the Gini, the KS measures how well a model can distinguish between good and bad customers. It does so by first creating a KS graph of the cumulative distribution function for the good and bad customers. In the graph, the x-axis represents the credit scores, and the y-axis represents the percentage of customers that have scores below that particular credit score. So for example, if we pick a score like 498 or 500 here somewhere, then we'll see that 20% of good customers and 60% of bad customers have credit scores below 500. We also see that there's a distance between the distribution of good customers and the distribution of bad customers. The KS statistic refers to the maximum distance between these two distributions. So for example, in this case, the KS statistic value is 0 0.47. A value of 1 indicates that the distributions are perfectly separated, while a value of 0 indicates that the distributions are the same. In theory, we should choose a score that corresponds to where the maximum distance is located and use that score as our threshold where we will then reject every customer that has a credit score below that score threshold. Doing so will give us the ideal trade-off in accepting the largest percentage of good customers while at the same time rejecting the largest percentage of bad customers. But in many cases, it's not that easy to know where to put the threshold simply by knowing the care statistic. For example, what if you want to employ a high-risk strategy and choose a score with less distance but accepts more good customers? Conversely, what if you want to accept less bad customers and therefore choose a higher score threshold? The score that gives you the best distance isn't always the best score to use. It's also not easy to compare KS scores between two models as their score distributions might be different. For example, if we compare this model with this new model, we found that this new model has a higher KS value, but the score distribution is different, so it's hard to compare those two directly. That concludes our explanation of Gini coefficient and KS statistic. Thank you for watching. Remember, with proper credit score evaluation methods, you can avoid losing money, and eventually, instead of becoming a creepy, drunk old man, you'll become a classy, rich, drunk old man. Congratulations!